Hey, I'm Sean. And I'm MJ. Remember last time how we were exploring the big idea of how God can work through unlikely people? Well, today we're gonna explore the big idea of how God can work through unlikely situations. Totally. I remember a time when my friend invited me to his church, and I remember thinking it was huge and I wouldn't be able to connect. You know, people were dressing a lot more casual, and worship was just a lot different, and I didn't think it would be a place for me. Hmm. And later on, I was in a season of growth, and I just needed something different. I wanted to grow in my faith, and I remember that church, and I went and visited it again and thought, hey, this, this is a place I think I could call home. And I have ever since. That's so awesome, man. I am so glad that you're here and that we're able to journey with one another. Yeah. Speaking of journeys, let's check out how God journeys with Joshua. Well, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. That's not even how you say the word everyone. That was, bar that was barely a word. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Jamie Robertson. Let's dig in. Our big idea for today is that God can work through unlikely situations. Now in our culture, and especially for, for your age, there's, it's tough. We want to avoid certain situations. We have, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of anxiety and depression, feelings of isolation, and I'm not gonna be able to solve all. But there is, sometimes it creeps in this idea that if we're following God, those things will be lessened. And to a certain extent, yes, there is a joy, there is a peace that comes from following God, but there is struggle. So so up until this point, Joshua's leadership has looked a lot like Moses. And I mean, rightfully so. Moses was an incredible leader. Joshua is doing a lot of the same things. He's sending the spies and he's celebrating the festivals that Moses introduced to the people. And that helps sort of bring the people together. I mean, when they cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land, the water even parted. Now, the Jordan River is not that deep. It's not like the Red Sea where you have to, it has to part in order for the people to cross. But it's God's way of showing the people that he is, in fact, with Joshua. So up until this, like I said, Joshua is looking like the next generation Moses. But they're coming into this very important part and something is troubling Joshua. I mean, he's not just called to be another new Moses, he's called to be Joshua. And this is an important part for you because that, that struggle, that, that sort of feeling of dis-ease can be the exact thing that leads you to the path that makes you you and introduces you to the ideas that God wants you to introduce to others. So as our story picks up, Joshua sort of left the camp and he's walking on his own, struggling with these ideas and then the most amazing thing happens. All right, we are in Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and demanded, Are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did as he was told. So Joshua is off on his own, struggling with the concerns and worries of his time. And lo and behold, this commander of the Lord's army shows up. It's, it's a weird story, but it's an important one. And it's important because it begins with Joshua trying to make the commander identify which side is he on. Are you with me or are you with them? And the commander says, neither one. I'm the commander of God's army. Remember last time we talked a little bit about the violence of this time, and that's true. But what makes God, the God of the Hebrew scriptures, so unique is that this is a God that seems to be on everybody's side. Yes, the Israelites are chosen, but this is also a God who weeps for the sides that the Israelites go against in military combat. When Joshua asks, are you on our side, the easy answer would be, yes, I'm with you, because he's about to give Joshua some information, but he doesn't. He says, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm God's commander. Joshua's leadership is about to take a, a whole other trajectory. He is no longer about to be a little Moses, but these little signs along the way let him know that God is with him like he was with Moses. I mean, like I said, the parting of the Jordan River. As he's talking to the commander here, he's like, what do you want me to do? And the first thing the, the commander of God's army says is, remove your sandals for where you're standing is holy. That happened to Moses when he encountered the burning bush right before he went to Egypt to set the people free. Joshua is God's chosen representative to take over for Moses, but his mission is different. And that's the message I wanna leave with you. He was, he was doing things in, in Moses' pattern, but something was, was eating at him and, and it drove him to be by himself to be in silence, 
to listen. And again, this situation that we may want to avoid became the exact situation that brought Joshua into his own. Because following what we just read, the commander of the armies of the Lord is gonna tell Joshua, your next military strategy is very musical and patient. You're gonna march around Jericho and you're gonna let God take down the walls. Moses and you have done everything that has been wise and in human strength, but now it is time for Joshua to do an amazing thing. Moses brought the people out of Egypt through God's deliverance. Joshua is gonna bring the people home through God's deliverance and strength. My young friends, as you influence, you will have times where you will doubt what you're doing is right. You will lean on those who've come before and, and do things the way that they've done, and rightfully so, that makes sense. But the situations, even the most unlikely situations, if you can be courageous, don't give in to discouragement, walk on your own, be silent and listen, you will allow God to speak to you and guide you in a way that no one has ever gone before. No one thought Joshua's plan was a great one, but it was the one that worked because Joshua took the time to listen and had the faith to believe and follow God, even in the most unlikely situation. All right, I am Jamie Robertson, you are you, and I am rooting for you. Have courage, don't be discouraged. Let those moments, those unlikely situations, be the places that you don't fear, but you start to expect God is going to speak to you. Till next time, take care and God bless. It's fairly common to use intimidation to get your opponent to back down or surrender. I think the Israelites marching around Jericho must have been intimidating. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the people of Jericho simply thought the city walls would fall down because of that. Absolutely not. I think they're probably expecting fighting or acts of war, but instead God surprised them by using an unusual method to bring the walls down. Yeah, God often uses unexpected or even painful situations to work in our lives. Let's take a look at the story and see once again how God shows his love. I've always planned my life and been an organized and planned person. So I've always made lists and set goals for myself. And that has shown up from day to day and also five years out. So I would always make these lists and set goals. And I felt as long as I could accomplish those goals and cross them off my list, then life would be easy and predictable. I'm Michaela. I enjoy spending time with my family and friends and being active, and I also am a blogger. When I was in my third year of university, at the age of 20, I was unexpectedly diagnosed with cancer, and following that diagnosis, I did a year-long cancer treatment for melanoma, and it was a real period of being absolutely devastated and heartbroken by that diagnosis. Being that I was such a planner, I had to really let go of the plans that I had for my own life and step into what God had for me next, which was cancer treatment, and that involved completely surrendering to Him, and I just really wanted to feel normal again. As a result of the cancer treatment, I experienced debilitating fatigue, constant nausea, and losing my hair. Not only did the cancer leave physical scars on my body, but I also felt like it left a lot of scars emotionally and on my soul. And so much so that I ended up falling into depression and I had to fight every day to climb out of that. And I did that through walking really closely with the Lord. My doctors recommended that I would stop school for the year that I was doing cancer treatment, but I had already felt like cancer had taken so much from me that I didn't want it to take any more. So I did continue with school just on a reduced course load so that I could feel just one little bit of normalness. My doctors were telling me what I needed to do medically to fight the cancer that was in my body, but I knew that if I did what they were telling me, I could also fight it spiritually with God. And I knew that there was a name higher than the name of cancer, and that name is Jesus. So throughout all of my cancer treatment, 
I really felt like the Lord was with me and really present, but I also had an amazing support system of my family and friends. Today, I have no evidence of cancer in my body, and I finished school, and I'm currently working full-time as a public relations and marketing coordinator, which I love, and I also am able to do a little bit of modeling on the side. So I started blogging when I received my diagnosis as a way to keep everyone up to date on how my treatment was going, but since then it's evolved into a way to just really share my heart and encourage others no matter what they're going through. I've learned that no matter how much you plan in your life, nothing is ever gonna go according to your plan, but it's going to go according to God's, which is so much better than you could ever imagine. So often in life, we worry about the what ifs. Through this journey, God has taken me from a place of thinking about the what if to even if. So even if something were to happen to me, I know that he's faithful and he's with me no matter what happens. What a powerful story. It's so cool to see how God was with Michaela through all the terrifying circumstances. When she said that she knew that there was a name higher than cancer and that that name was Jesus, that really spoke to me. Yeah, God didn't only just bring her to a place where she had no cancer in her body, but also to a place where she could encourage others who were going through a rough time in their lives. Amazing, and what I learned from this is that when we are going through terrifying circumstances, we shouldn't ask the question of why are we going through this, but instead how God can you work through this situation? Hmm. That is definitely something to remember. Okay, let's break into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our lives.